Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Pay no attention to my room. Once I'm done with my project, I'm going to clean it. Real cleaning. It's been a dump zone for the past couple of months, and I'm going to clean it when I'm done, okay? So good morning. Today is October 24th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection of the Old Testament. How beautiful, <clears throat> how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth, Isaiah 52, 7. In the Sermon on the Mount, the Master taught, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The God of heaven is surely pleased with those who seek to establish peace among feuding nations, but this passage has a much broader meaning. Lasting peace can come to the earth only as the gospel of Jesus Christ is allowed to enter the minds and hearts of persons everywhere. The most glorious and blessed thing we can do is to teach and testify of the gospel to lead others to the kind of spiritual rebirth that overcomes fear and enmity, to teach them to live as the Prince of Peace lived. That is why the Whitmer brothers were instructed that the thing which will be of most worth unto you will be to declare repentance unto this people, that you may bring souls unto me, that you may rest with them in the kingdom of my Father. Okay. So this week we're in Ezekiel, and today is Ezekiel 1, and let me tell you, it's a humdinger. They say Isaiah is confusing. This was confusing. Okay. Ezekiel sees in vision four living creatures, four wheels, and the glory of God on his throne. Now, he says that he sees in vision four creatures, and they have four faces, and one is the face of a man, and one is of an ox, and one is an eagle, and the other one is a lion. And they have four wings and they're joined, but two cover his body and two are upstretched towards heaven. And they have feet, but they look like cow hooves, the soles of the feet. And they move, but they move in a straight line. And then he also sees four wheels. Now, that's the most confusing part, is the wheels. Because you're like, okay... And what do these wheels look like? What are they doing? It just says that when the creatures move, they move. Uh, and uh, honestly, I was just like, what? What? And none of this makes sense. It's like when somebody's t telling you their dream, but they don't put any detail into it at all. And you're like, why did you tell me that? Okay, so the side-by-side -side skips straight over to chapter 18. So that's going to be no help. And I don't know, there was just zero detail in there. And, like, I don't know, it was just so confusing. I think I have something in my eye. Ezekiel 1, okay. Thank goodness there's a few things in here. Honestly, like, I couldn't pick out a single thing to talk about. Not a, and then he sees the Lord on his throne. That's, that's what I got. Okay. Um, for verses 1 through 3, Elias Rasmussen has provided the following commentary on these verses. There has been a question as to what Ezekiel refers to as the 13th year. Um, it's um, the 13th year in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, I was among the captives by the river. That's what they're talking about. Um, traditional Jewish commentaries say it was the 13th year of the Jubilee, but not, but do not say when the last Jubilee year had occurred. 30 years from 200 and 625 BC, the beginning of the reign of Nebopolzar, father of Nebuchadnezzar, gives the date of 595 BC. That would be about the same as the fifth year of Je Jehoiachin's captivity and would be a reasonable interpretation. 
the place, the river Shabar, Sebar, could have been the Euphrates by its Babylonian name. However, some think it was the canal which connected the Euphrates and the Tigris near their confluence. We do not have record of any other Hebrew prophets called to the prophetic mission while living outside the land of Israel. All right, and then here's one for verse 22, which we can go ahead and read. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color <coughs> was as the color of a terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. Seriously, it's so confusing. This verse could have been translated, and a likeness was over their heads of the living creature, an expanse like the color of awesome crystals stretched out over their heads from above. And then 26 through 28. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man up above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within, from the appearance of his loins were upward, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. <laughs> This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, and when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Maybe what's so confusing about the way that Ezekiel writes or speaks is that he says the appearance and the likeness in the same sentence. It's like when, when people are like, allegedly. Alleged, like, he did it, okay? Allegedly he hit his wife. No, he hit his wife. Okay, just say he hit his wife. Don't say allegedly he hit his wife or allegedly they say he hit his wife. He hit his wife. Okay, don't say the appearance of the likeness of. But anyways, moving on. This description of Jehovah by Ezekiel has a spirit of reverence and awe similar to the descriptions of other prophets, including Isaiah um, in Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 and Moses, Moses 1 verses 9 through 11 and Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith history, Chapter 1, verse 17. I didn't bring much reverence to it when talking about beating your wife. Honestly, I this was a hard one. And if you read it and you understand what he's talking about and what he's seen, then good on you. Because I did not. Where did I put? There it is. I didn't understand a single thing. Except for there were creatures and they looked weird. And then there were wheels. What were the wheels? I don't understand. What were the wheels doing? What's their purpose? They were upon the earth. And when the angels or the creatures moved up, they moved up. And when they moved down, they moved down. And when they stood still, the wheels stood still. Is it in reference to dispensations? It didn't say the wheels spinned or turned. I don't know. Anyways. I will now leave you all with a prayer from a diary of prayer. This one is anonymous. It's before the 18th century. And it's office hymn for compline. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that with thy wanted favor, thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams, defend our eyes from mighty fears and fantasies. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask, O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. I like it when they rhyme. Okay. For the most part, that was Ezekiel 
one and we do two and three tomorrow and good luck to us all right i have to go to work apparently it snowed last night let's see how i get to work on my scooter and uh have a great day we'll see you later bye